Rods. Just what are these creatures known as rods? Where did they come from? These long, tubular, jellyfish-looking things that are flying at speeds that you can't see with the naked eye. How do they work? It just works. Are they among us right now? You're about to see a creature that is among us. Amogus. Are they the reason why so many of us are peeing blood? Time to take a piss. Are they just a common camera artifact turned cryptid? All these questions and more will be answered in this episode of Our Bizarre World. Starting off, I had to confirm that my line of questioning was on point, so I decided to see what Araki had to say about the organisms he depicted. In a commentary on Stone Ocean, he said that they are, quote, based off the skyfish, an animal from urban legend. They are also known as rods. I remember seeing a TV show about these back then too, so that must be where they're from. That surprised me. I was certain he'd have started off the interview with something along the lines of One day, I read in a book. Because to me, that just seems to be where he gets all of his other ideas from. Nevertheless, it appears that these rods are just that, an urban legend brought to life within Stone Ocean. Needless to say, I was disappointed by this fact. But to be sure of my findings, I decided to put on my detective hat and delve deep into the web for answers, only to be met by various now dead links as I got ever closer to the source. Is this a mere coincidence, or something else more sinister entirely? Whatever the case may be, I trudged on and eventually found all the info I needed on various old websites. Apparently, the rods were first filmed by Jose Escamilla by a complete accident in Midway, New Mexico on March 19, 1994. Later on, he would go on to promote footage taken from a recording of base jumpers that he believed displayed this phenomenon most clearly. Captured at the Cave of Swallows in Mexico, what we can see appears to be creatures with pointed cylindrical bodies with what may perhaps be multiple spinning sets of wings propelling them along. Escamilla, however, held a different opinion. Rods are translucent, they have translucent bodies and they have what appears to be a membrane along both sides of the torso in bilateral symmetry. It seems to be that they move at a pace so rapid that only certain camera setups are able to capture them. After the promotion of this footage, many more films began to be released demonstrating it to be a worldwide occurrence. Escamilla became a key figure in the research of rods, along with a team of independent investigators. In 1997, Escamilla brought parts of his footage to the eyes of zoologists and entomologists from the University of Colorado, making efforts to have the rods recognized scientifically. He expressed that they were baffled, saying what they saw was unlike anything they had ever seen, and that it deserved further study. Since 1998, biologist Ken Swartz has been investigating rods. He says that they appear to be biological, but without his physical specimen, nothing can be concluded. Information he gathered leads him to believe that they are amphibious and squid-like due to being filmed underwater. That begs the question, why has there never been a corpse found from one of these creatures? According to him, if they are like a squid, then they wouldn't have any hard body parts and thus would be able to decompose without leaving anything behind. Look, I'm no biologist, but I think people have found dead squids before. They don't just turn into water the moment they die, but they do turn into ink. People have speculated where rods might appear on the evolutionary ladder, the closest thing being a theoretical missing link between the lowly crawling insects and the appearance of winged insects. This would be called the proto-terragoat. The fact that it looks vaguely like what is seen in the pictures, and functions aeronautically, could lend credence to this idea. Or there's the idea that they're descended from the anomalocarids, an ancient type of shrimp that looks similar to what is seen on film, and with a close enough seeming method of propulsion, it might be said that perhaps after its 20 million year reign, it decided not only to rule the sea, but the air as well. And I guess space too. Apparently these things conquered every environment and no one noticed until now. Even though we are currently looking at the past, I'd be remiss not to circle back to Araki's idea in this segment. Having written in the original Japanese manga that they come from the Balanoglosis, an ocean-dwelling acorn worm which is an evolutionary link between vertebrates and invertebrates. You can tell that much of the design of Araki's rods are inspired by this. It's kind of cool that instead of going with the popular theories at the time, he seemingly came up with his own thing, with a vibe of My source is that I made it the fuck up! while blaming it on the speculations of Emporio. Even ignoring that and looking strictly to the past, there is clearly an element of mystery as well as intrigue to the legend of the rods, so of course it made its way to Japanese television. <laughs> Yes, it appears that while this phenomenon was largely ignored by the Western world, Japan was, in the meantime, hooked. This program, which appears to have come out during the production of the Stone Ocean manga, captures everything perfectly. 
the overdramatic reduction. The React Andes. A genuine boots on the ground investigative work shows that this rod, or as the Japanese like to call them, skyfish thing, genuinely captured the imagination of the Japanese people. They even took a whole production crew down to Mexico to film the same cave of swallows that had birthed as Camila's most famous footage, indicating they believed the story would receive enough viewership to justify the high costs of its creation. Interestingly enough, this same pit is mentioned by name in Stone Ocean, as well as a slightly altered account of what actually happened to cause their discovery. There is also mention of the investigation done by Japanese reporters and their failed attempt to capture them. These shared elements lead me to believe that there is a chance that the program I found is in fact the same one in which Araki got his inspiration. I couldn't find the date in which this aired on television, but the last pieces of CCTV film that they use are dated February 24, 2002, so it most likely aired a short time after. Our first glimpse of Rakil was on February 9th, which does put his initial conception before the airing of the program, but the full reveal of him and his ability became public on April 16th, meaning even if this chapter was drawn weeks in advance, he could have easily seen this program before he got started on it. I wouldn't put it past them to have no idea planned for Rikiel's ability, opting is said to wait until inspiration struck last moment to keep things interesting. Some of his interviews indicate this is a bit of a habit for him. Plus, there are other things in this program that lend to this theory. The artistic rendition of the rods look very close to that of Araki's. This also seems to be where the idea that they are capable of attacking and injuring people comes from, as I was unable to find anything about that anywhere else during my research. Last but not least, the program illustrates how the body of a rod will rapidly decompose in a similar fashion to Araki's depiction as well. But who knows, I could be wrong, and aside from all the info I found that directly relates to the main question I set out to answer for this video, what really amazed me is just how much this skyfish idea took off in Japan. Even years after its introduction, programs were still being released to the public to some degree of success covering the topic. In fact, I found a small part of a series of comedic videos called How to Catch the Skyfish, each featuring experts employing various strange methods to try and capture them. Each episode is hilarious even if you don't have an understanding of Japanese. The over-the-top parody of informational television and the use of physical comedy is just something else. My favorite method personally is capture by oil. I'll leave it up to you to figure out what's going on here. It may seem that this is all one big joke, which I mean, it kinda is. But what it really shows is that the skyfish phenomena wasn't just a flash in the pan for Japanese media. In fact, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure wasn't alone when it came to referencing them. For example, they can be found in Castlevania Aria of Sorrow, being one of the hardest enemies to get in the game, requiring the player to slow down time the second they appear on screen, otherwise they disappear within the blink of an eye. I just find it amazing how Jose Escamilla was able to capture the imaginations of so many people on the other side of the world despite having one of the most outlandish and easily debunked claims about what is in reality just a common camera artifact. Yes, what this truly all boils down to is that when a camera has a long exposure set, certain insects or other small creatures that whiz by the camera will be met with motion blur, creating the illusion of a rod-like body and the flap of their wings blurring into bulges across it. As for the claims that they were captured on film, underwater, and in space, it appears to me that any small moving objects with a rod-like appearance would be chalked into the same group, which is, in my opinion, too broad a definition to actually take seriously. Unfortunately, Jose Escamilla passed away in December of 2018. I know I made a lot of jokes regarding this topic, but I'd truly like to give him a big thank you for dedicating so much of his life to the discovery of rods, and by doing so, helping to make this world a little more bizarre. On that somber note, if you'd like me to continue to make videos like these, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, and leave me a like and a comment. If you have any real world crossover topics regarding anime or manga that you'd like me to cover in the future, please leave them down in the comments below. Till next time, farewell.